I can only speak for myself, and Thomas can speak for himself, but poetry mm -hmm. for me is a way of life. Mm -hmm. I live in a poetic manner. And what do I mean by that? I wrote this short poem, and it's not quite a poem. It, it just kind of tells you what I do. And I hope this counteracts the perception that poets are lazy. Because there are plenty of guys who believe that all poets do is sit and ponder their navel or wander around out in the wilderness doing nothing. Poetry is a way of life or how to become a poet without writing a word. Poetry is a way of life. Therefore, practice synchronicity. Keep your nose in literature. Use analogy after analogy in your conversations. Especially mix your metaphors. Study your family history and the history of the world. Learn your people's symbols. Study terrain, geology, and sociology. Study the mechanical and the natural sciences too. Sometimes don't study a thing. Once in a while, break your own rules and theirs. Mm -hmm. Examine your pain and the maladies of others. Examine your moments of pleasure and ecstasy after you've lost their glow. Mm -hmm. Practice personal and communal ritual. Speak with people on the street and with wild animals who hide in the woods and wait for you to play and hunt with them. Do not be afraid of the dark or the unknown and pray. If you do those simple things, you're a poet. <laughs> you do this and the writing will come. I guarantee that. I was trained as a journalist, which of course is a, a generalist. I still consider myself a, a journalist. I am a reporter. I report on the activities of the soul. Mm -hmm. I report on the activities of the wild in the wilderness. I report on the activities of my community. Uh, whether it's political activity, I will report on that. But it's not the kind of reporting you're going to get in the newspaper or on Twitter. Mm -hmm. you know, I am still reporting. Mm -hmm. All of the poets that I know, that I, I value their work, all of them, I consider the most curious human beings I've ever met. Curiosity is a virtue. The poets that I know, whose work I value, they are the, some of the most courageous people because they will go after something that other people won't go after. They will try and go into themselves. They will go examine that complex on their own often. They may be living in what we think is isolation because most poets are introspectives. 
But they will go in alone and dig around in crap and shit that most people will say, I'm not going to touch. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we got the dirty hands to prove it. Yeah. So why do we do poetry? <clears throat> Something happened. What you see on the page is just an expression of what we found. We may rework the words once it's on a page, but the real work is not putting it on the paper. The real work is going either inside or outside. You know, uh, one of the things that's really scary about sitting in this spot here is looking out at your faces and having this thought of, man, I don't dare bullshit these guys. You know, cause that, would be a, that would be a sin against your attention. But I'm going to say, in all honesty, what Tim has just said about why, why we do this as, uh, as a way of life, I, I really concur with that. About two weeks ago, I, I just wrote in my journal this sentence, my poetry uh, is an understanding of life unfolding. So <clears throat> what I'm continually doing when I write and open the notebook is I'm really trying to understand my experience and I'm trying to understand it on all of these different levels that we've been talking about, the community level, the national level, the family level, the individual level. And I'd have to say, you know, not only is it a way of life, but I think of it too uh, as a way to survive life. Yes. Because... This morning, Francis was talking about having a practice that holds you, you know, through all of the, the really hard stuff. And for me, and I suspect this is true for Tim, too, I haven't asked him, but for me, if I didn't have poetry as a decades-long practice, uh, I think I'd be in the loony bin right now. I just couldn't handle it. I get crazy if I don't write. And so many poets from my youth, they did end up in the loony bin or overdosed. When I was at the University of Minnesota as an undergraduate, John Berryman jumped off the Washington Avenue Bridge. And I had been studying poetry, and I said, my God, if poetry does that to somebody, I'm not, I'm not going down that road. I didn't know anything about John Behrman's life at the time. I just knew that I loved poetry, and I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. So I continued to write poetry, but I didn't let other people know about it. So I continued it as part of my life. And if you look back on the biographies of uh, some of our more intense poets, you know, such as Rilke and uh, Rambeau, Baudelaire, people like that, Lorca, not many of them lived to see old age. Right. You know, those poets burned hard and fast, and <clears throat> they were gone too soon. One of the things that's really different about the example of Robert Bly is <clears throat> how he was able to avoid that while maintaining intensity, and I'm sure that's part of the reason that uh, he's become a teacher and mentor of such long standing to so many of us because he's 88 years old and still alive. Yeah. And he le has left in his wake a, you know, a comet incandescent trail of uh, intense poems. 